I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? This is Michael Deleen with uh, Kosha Anya Juba of... The Global Eco Village Network here. Yes, we had a technical problem, but we are going to continue. Um, the Senegal government has been far more positive towards uh, what you're doing than you might see in, in uh, European governments, for example. Why do you think that is? Um, hmm. Well, the, the thing that I was saying before about the, the work starting from educational work and then growing into the Ecovillage um, model is, um, I think, which, what makes it so grounded. But it's also that a work has been happening there over 10 years so that the government could actually see the results on the ground. And it's not just an idea, they can actually see it. And now other African countries, like the Ghanaian um, Minister of Environment, has already visited Senegal to see the results. And because of that, has made it into part of her policy as well. So it's very important for people to see results. But um, I think in Europe, you know, in, in Senegal, the need is so great that people are in so much... I mean, it's a totally different situation, you know. They're coming from having nothing. Actually, the villages are dying and the people are moving into slums. And the governments are really looking for ways to make the village life come alive again and be attractive also for young people. So young people need to be connected to the global network for them to even want to stay there, you know. So... It's, it's a totally different situation, and I don't, I don't see the eco-village movement in Europe having much similarity. I mean, there's an, a, a very strong mutual inspiration and a collaboration that can take place, but it's not the same situation at all. So I think in Europe, we, we are having more success than one can see at the surface. Because like I said before, the governments are starting to speak a similar language. Community, you know, like the word cooperation instead of competition, I mean, or collaboration instead of competition, these kind of words are just starting to be normal everyday usage of language. You know? And I think a lot of that has happened on the ground of what has grown out of the 60s. Even if it was not as successful as it should have been, but it has infiltrated society. You know, we have green parties standing in the governments now. And I think in Europe, we have a challenge to be more open to mainstream, to move into urban environments like the Transition Town movement is doing at present, and to move into schools and into educational systems to link up the longing that children and youth have you know, especially children, youth and young people, they are tired of hearing adults speak and not do. And the lack of integrity that society is showing is very painful. Yeah. So if I were to ask you what one recommendation you would give to COP15, what would that be? Hmm. Well, to be honest, to me, I can't see climate change as the main thing. I see it as a part of a whole, whole huge interconnected systemic question that we're facing. And to me, what I'm most fascinated by and what touches my heart most deeply is the concept of global wisdom or collective wisdom. How can we become collectively intelligent? And even more, how can we become collectively wise and take wise decisions together? And for me, I don't believe that there's any one solution to that. I think it's about every time we meet with a person, every time we start um, speaking strategy, it's in the everyday now situations of our life where we take a decision of either opening up to the unknown, allowing something new to arise through us, and bring the best that we have to realizing our dreams. I believe that our dreams, the inner dreams that we have, because I think every person has a dream of wanting to leave the planet a better place when we die, and allowing our dreams to unfold their power in our everyday life, and doing this wherever we connect to, to me is the most important thing. So it's not about any one thing that we do.
but it's about doing what we're meant to be doing now. And that involves education, that involves the ability to think and the ability yeah, to instance, communicate. I'm, I'm really inspired at the moment to do a, a program about Dragon Dreaming, which is about inter interlinking the dreams of people, it's a method, and creating very successful projects from that and bringing that to schools and to giving children a taste of the possibility of realizing your visions and your dreams. Because I think this is what we've been taking away from children for a long time in our educational systems. Like just getting them ready to work in a society that is destroying it, you know, but instead to, to get people to really believe again in, in themselves, I think is, well this is where the point that I'm working at. And I think there's a lot we can do in connecting bottom-up and top-down strategies. So, think global, act local. And you're thinking much indeed. Yeah, thank you very much.